Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for celebrating Earth Day. Uh, my Hi. name. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> My name is Pamela Cortez, uh, and really excited here. Uh, work at Microsoft focusing on IoT, but also sustainability. And we are joined here by tons of speakers today uh, telling their stories. Uh, hi, Max. Hey, Pamela, how are you today? Doing good. Are you ready? We have a jam packed session uh, all about is... IoT, sustainability, protecting endangered species, and ecosystems. It is going to be amazing. We're going to be yeah. meeting with so many people that are literally, literally inspiring, and they're doing mm -hmm. amazing work. And mostly, that's like one of very good reason that I enjoy working at Microsoft is those projects. Just you can help with those, and it just feels so good. It does. It does. And I love that each one is very inspiring. And then also we'll be sharing um, each one of the speakers will be showing sharing how to get involved and how you can actually use their open source projects uh, to make your own uh, project for your local community or even global uh, projects as well to protect ecosystems and animals of all different shapes and sizes. So uh, since we do have a jam packed agenda, let's go ahead and just give what we're going to be uh, uh, bringing in and what projects we're going to be showing and then we could jump right into it. All right. So do you, do you want to start or I start? You know, I, I could go ahead and start. Uh, oh, so <laughs> I'll just jump right in. Uh, so the first thing on the agenda, we're going to bring in Sarah and Daisuke to talk about Project 15, which I'm such a huge fan of this. Uh, Sarah and Daisuke are absolutely amazing. They started this project to talk uh, to bring in technologists and conservationists together to really help uh, endangered species and ecosystems. And so super excited to have them here. And they're going to be the first fo folks to talk about the project and get everyone super excited. All right. And then we're going to go and talk about a few student capstone projects. We're going to talk about what is a capstone project, but they've been they're basically been involved in those Project 15 initiative, and they've been helping out change the world and help save those animals. So we will be uh, showing off what they've been doing. We've been doing a little bit of interview, like how what they've learned, what they found difficult, and then we're going to head over to you to talk about. Elephant Edge yes. uh, challenge. We actually started this challenge with Hackster uh, a year ago in 2020, which is crazy to think of. Uh, and it was a big call to the community about coming together to build the most advanced elephant tracking collar. And we have a special guest here today, which I'm super excited. We were able to get Adam from Edge Impulse last minute. Uh, so really excited for him to talk about the challenge. And we have the challenge winners actually showcasing and sharing their learnings and telling folks uh, how they can get involved. Uh, so I'm super excited about that because we have about five of the six winners there to, to showcase those projects. And then we're going to end with resources. Uh, so we'll have a couple links at the end on how you can join, uh, get in contact with everyone that you saw today. So it'll be a, just a, a great way for you to just jump in and, and start making your own projects. Uh, and before we get started, I was going to do a big announcement. So we have a oh. new hackathon for IoT and sustainability. So I'm excited. It's a big announcement for Earth Day. Uh, and actually, let me bring up that PowerPoint slide again um, and showcase a little bit about it. But it's all about building IoT projects for sustainability. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about that at the end uh, when we have more time. So let's just jump in. Uh, Max, do you want to kick us off? Yeah. So next, we're going to dive uh, straight up into a very important project uh, for us at Microsoft, and that is Project 15. Uh, it's a focus on the environmental efforts, like we were seeing before, and we really care about that. So Sarah and Daisuke will tell us all about it right after this quick video intro. We lose one L from the planet every 15 minutes. We will lose all elephants in 10 years. It is that statistic that pushed me into action. 15 minutes. The 
issues we're having around preservation, nature, and what I've learned is that scientists need help and they're running out of time. Project 15 is about building this bridge between the scientists scientific community and the technical community so they can learn what tools we can bring to the table. The Serengeti is one of the largest parks in Africa at 17,000 square kilometers, yet the Serengeti only has 150 guards. Imagine trying to protect the state of Maryland with 150 rangers. It's impossible. We started on Trail Guard about four years ago. It's a sensor put out in the field that can detect poachers and stop them before they kill. The first ones were successful. The problem was that our camera system sent every image, and that drained the battery really fast. By listening to him, I learned that a solution that I had designed applied, and that was a safety platform called Project Edison. His camera sent events. It was the same as anything we did in a city, and that was my aha moment. Sarah talks about the idea, and I said, I know how to do it. We started drawing boundaries and where we could put devices and how that could all be brought up to the cloud for better notification of rangers. We built Hello. Um, so the video got a little choppy, AKA um, frozen. So I thought, I don't know what you all saw, but I was st sitting like this for a little bit. Um, so we'll 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 walk through it live. This is this is what happens on live TV, um, <laughs> live from uh, Seattle area. It's Dice K and Sarah and Project Fifteen from Microsoft. I'm Sarah. Uh, I'm I'm a founder of Project Fifteen, which really started out as an aha moment, um, where you can go to the video and and watch uh, that story, and I'll explain it in a bit. And this is Dice K, who is on mute. Hi, I'm Daisuke. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Hi. Um, so Sarah came to me one day and said, you know, what if, can we do this? What if, you know, so many what ifs? And I said, you know, you know, it should be easy. Let's go do it. So we started meeting with people, talking to people, asking questions. We learned a lot. And it's amazing uh, how many projects we got, and you, you know, we, we are so excited we can show some of them today. Um, that's true. So really what it was about was I had uh, invented a safety platform uh, a few years ago, and then I met Dr. Eric Dinnerstein, and he has an anti-poaching uh, solution with a camera trap. And I realized really quickly that it was another use case that I had been talking about safety all over the place, uh, you know, safe retail, safe factories, safe schools, safe workplaces. And when it got down to it, it was a population you want to protect. It was someone or something that you want to stop or make less impactful using sensors. And then a bunch of people that you're messaging for help. And so when you really thought about anti-poaching, it was the group of animals, it was the camera trap sending an alert that, hey, I see something, I'm not supposed to be there. And then the rangers coming in to help. And so the idea kind of grew from there where what else did did we as a, as a commercial uh, solutioning community have that could help accelerate these scientific-based projects? And so, you know, when you thought about it, what was the real difference between lo loss prevention of a sweater at a big store or loss prevention of a pangolin at a park? When it, you know, those are the same use cases, they just have different challenges and folks like people listening and Daisuke and, and all the other um, technical folks I know, we love solving problems like that. So that's kind of how it started. Daisuke, do you wanna talk about where it grew to? Yeah, sure. So one day, you know, another Sarah's wife, and she came to me and said, what if we create something people can use? I thought about it because after talking to, you know, scientists and the uh, uh, NGOs, we quickly, you know, realized, oh, I don't know how to help them because I, there's only two of us and there are thousands of people looking for, you know, our help and support. So we decided to create a tool people can start so you know people don't have to learn from you know iot you know 
basic zero one two three so i can we can create some you know um, basics you know from zero to seven and uh, you know smart scientists and people they can just focus on what they're uh, looking for right? so um, let's see what we built the tool is called project 15 from um, open platform from microsoft and uh, can we see our my screen here yeah so it's on the github everything's open source you know you get to see you know what i created uh, it takes only a few clicks. So if you go to aka.ms project 15 code, will take you to this website. And there's a little button. And if you click this one, and it's a cooking show, you get this page and you just type in some of the information. So you know the we can make uh, this tool personalized for you know account and the names. Then within 10 minutes, you will get uh, uh, 70% of IoT solution. This is what we call open platform. True. And what's really interesting is you might notice it, that you have, it, for those of you who have you know, eagle eyes, you can see it says Azure Digital Twins. So a few months ago, um, when Azure Digital Twins became graph enabled, um, we added it to this platform so that folks with a click of a button in a setting could spin up either the Azure IoT pass based version. And there's a whole architecture out there on the GitHub for you uh, to look at. Um, or, you know, you could do the digital twins version if that's if that's what you, you wanted to make. So that, that was really exciting uh, for us and to be able to share with our developing uh, community, developer community, both in the scientific realm um, where this is really providing for them a, a really quick way to get that IoT plumbing up and going. If you have someone who's really, really deep into machine learning, data science, now you know they may not have known how to manage those those models going back out to the edge or to the camera, but something like this could help them. Um, and so what we did after that is we partnered with our friends over in the Microsoft Capstone program. And so we are super excited today because today we're going to show some projects because another what if moment was what if we could pair developers through this program with NGOs and nonprofits and help advance those uh, solutions further to get them going and the results of which we're gonna talk about today. And I'm so excited to pass the mic back to Max, who is going to introduce you to some of these great developers and their projects. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sarah. All right, so Project 15 is great. It's a, it's a great platform, but where it really shines is when we start to apply that, pro that, that project to real world uh, problems and and this capstone project is something that we're doing collaboration with University College London, uh, and they call this the UCL IXN, which is a lot of acronym. I know what it is. We work at Microsoft. We know we know acronyms, and that means basically University College London and IXN stands for Industry Exchange Network. And the goal here is to apply basically your academic learning to real world projects, which is exactly what we need. And they have about a thousand students working with bigger companies and charities or small and medium companies all over, uh, all over the world. And the goal here is to develop a good development practice for the developers and, and knowledge of the industry outside of just academia. And we're going to go and talk about two of those projects and we're going to start with my first uh one of the first students whose name is jack um and we will talk about his, his project so first hi hi jack how are you hi good thanks awesome so you're located in london right or ish uh, uk london ish yeah Okay, perfect. That's awesome. <laughs> so here's how we're going to start. We're going to start with a demo of your project, just explaining a little bit like what was done. And then we're going to go into a little bit more detail of like what this project was really about and the type of challenges you encountered and things that you learned that would not have been possible otherwise. So let's start with the first demo. And if you can walk us through uh, what's going on on the screen, that'd be amazing. Yeah, let's go for it. All right, so this is a simple demonstrator I made for a set of machine learning models I made to detect elephants in images. 
So here we're just uploading an image of an elephant to run against the machine learning models. Now we notice there are three columns. The two left most columns, so the left and middle column here, are for image classification models. The left column is a very simple convolutional neural network, and the middle column is a neural network based on the VGG16 architecture. You can see from these learning curves that the very simple CNN on the left is, isn't very good. It's quite erratic in terms of accuracy and loss, whereas the VGG16 model is much neater. In terms of metrics, the very simple CNN achieved a 77% accuracy on a test set, whereas the VGG16 model achieved a 97% accuracy on the test set. So immediately there, you can see it's a much higher performance. If we look at the confusion matrix for the simple CNN, you can see here there's a lot of misclassifications. For example, 16% of sheep are classified as elephants. So this isn't really a model that we'd want to use in a real world scenario because of the poor performance metrics. If we switch to looking at the VGD16 confusion matrix, however, you can see there's very limited um, misclassifications here and it's much more accurate. Uh, now we're gonna move on to the rightmost column, which is the Azure custom vision model. And this is actually an object detection model. So we're gonna give it a more complex image here using an image of many elephants. And the thing you'll notice immediately is that the image classification model is made using TensorFlow. They simply say that the image is of an elephant, whereas the Azure custom vision model, that's an object detection model, says that there are eight elephants in the image. Not only can it tell you how many elephants are in the image, if we look here, it can actually identify where in the image those elephants are. So using object detection to give us this extra information about the image and the elephants in the image, we can apply that extra information to extra use cases. So that's something we can't do using image classification. All right, and how long did that take you to build all this? Uh, to build the machine learning models, I'd say it took about uh, two to three months. Okay, so that's kind of like, it, it's not negligible. You kind of needed to know a little bit like what you wanted to build, right? Because yeah. And so now that we know a little bit what you built, um, can you talk to us about what was the goal of the project in itself? Because identifying elephants is always fun, but why did you need a, um, why did you need a machine learning model to identify elephants? Yeah, so the overall goal of the project was to create a system using the Project 15 platform to help prevent the poaching of elephants near the Zambezi River in Zambia. So we partnered with an organization called the Zambezi Partners and was a partner um, with a company called Kraus and Danny Aerospace. And together we tried to create the system to prevent elephant poaching. And my specific goal was to create tools that could add value to the system. So I made a script that takes videos from Azure Cloud Storage and sends them to Azure Video Indexer for a quick analysis. I made a simulator for camera traps because using re real camera traps to prototype and test solutions where it can be quite clunky and slow. So the camera trap simulator accelerates that process. And then I made the set of machine learning models, which I've just shown. This is amazing work. Um, it must not have been uh, that easy to go from just your, um, like, just with your academic knowledge and then trying to get this integration going with everything. Uh, it must have felt like going from zero to 100. Like, what did you find challenging in all this? Yeah, so one of the most challenging aspects is probably the learning curve of just learning Azure Cloud Services. But um, the documentation for all of the Azure Cloud Services make it very, very easy to do. Um, other challenges within the project itself would have probably been um, a, a good data set. For the machine learning models, um, the initial plan was to use the camera traps on the ground and in the actual you know, Zambezi area to collect our own data set to train on. However, due to time constraints and various blockers, we weren't able to collect our data set. So I had to use a publicly available images of elephants to train my data set on. So in, in, in a real world scenario, there's no problem it would not be that hard for uh, for them basically to just reuse their own data set and just retrain the model that you built to just basically accomplish what you just did, right? Yeah, yeah, so that should be absolutely fine. The, the code used using Python and TensorFlow to train the image classification models, that's essentially template code. They can just swap out the data sets and retrain it again and make any optimizations as they need. The, using Azure Custom Vision, again, that's just them taking their data set, uploading it, and then tagging the images as needed. This is amazing. Um, so you've went through all of this, you manage a project for the whole, for whole three months, you face some challenges, but every time we, we, we face challenges, that's something I love to say is that there's no better way to learn than making mistakes. And 
I'm pretty sure you, you, by going through all those challenges, you actually learn a whole bunch of things. So what were your learning? It, it doesn't have to be just technical. It could be just, well, how did you learn about like working in the industry or stuff like that? Like what kind of things did you learn? Yeah, so from this project, one of the big things I learned was actually um, working on a project where there's not just you know you and your assigned task. It's you within a team, and then there's mm. other teams and other companies. It's interesting seeing how a project in which multiple companies come together to work on one task is carried out. So you know, there's meetings with different people at different times at different intervals. So in terms of that soft skills, um, I think that's a really really key thing I picked up there. And in terms of technical, probably just learning how how is your works learning not only how is your works but how different as your tools work together to provide one large solution was a really really interesting aspect of the task well i hope that you really enjoyed this project uh because we really enjoyed uh working with you on this project as well it was uh very amazing and i hope that that left us with a positive experience with all of this Definitely um, did, yeah. <laughs> all right, so we're going to switch now over to our, our next student that was also working on a different project. Uh, this project was around uh, Red Pandas, and this is uh, Farid. How are you, Farid? I'm doing great. How are you, Max? Uh, pretty good. Are you still in the same time zone as Czech? Yes, I'm still in London. I'm still at university, actually, because university opened up recently. So I'm okay. pretty excited. Oh, okay. So yeah, no, I'm still stuck in my basement. So that's still fine. I'm, I'm going to say that's going to be that's going to be cool. Um, yeah. So it's, it's going to be the same process in check. Let's go through the demo. And then you can talk to us to, through it. And we're going to answer the same questions. So let's first, sure. play the, first play the demo and you can t walk us through what you did. Sure. So uh, as you can see here, this is the login page authentication is done using Active Directory. So um, Beforehand, uh, the organization was using a clunky workflow, made use of Excel spreadsheets and manual classifications. So they actually had a human who was, who was classifying images that are either Red Panda or not Red Panda. So my aim was, was to create an end-to-end -end solution that would, uh, would allow them to tell a story about their data. So, um, so as you can see here, there's a map which shows the location of um, their traps in the field. And if they actually click on a camera, then, then you can see uh, the information about that, that specific camera trap, uh, including its ID, the total number of pictures, and you can just flick through them for like a nice experience to uh, interact with your data. And then if they want to click on a panda and see uh, who spotted that panda and, and what they actually spotted in uh, the Himalayan mountains, they can do that also. Uh, next, I will walk you through how they actually upload images onto this uh, platform. So if they click on upload new images. They can choose the ID on the left-hand side. In this case, we'll choose 0012. They can then choose uh, the, uh, the images they want to upload. And in this case, we will choose a few extra images which aren't red pandas to show how the um, image classification actually works. So here we chose uh, a tiger. And, once, and uh, if you click Analyze Images, it will um, use the AI to actually classify the images and display them in an easy to use intuitive interface, which allows them to actually make um, changes if there was any um, misclassifications in, in the classification itself. So if they want to actually make a change, they hold an image down and drag it across, as you'll see now, as you'll see now. Yeah, there it is. And if they want to upload the images to that respective camera trap, they click upload images, then go back to the map Click 0012, and you can see all of the images in three, two, one, bam, right there. So yeah, that that's the main project, and hopefully, what what um, it will help them to do is tell a better story about their data. Because beforehand, after having done the uh, the, the initial interview with them, it was slightly hard to understand what they were actually trying to do. So hopefully now. <laughs> Uh, it's slightly easier to explain to someone who's gonna gonna try to work on top of this later on. Right, just like in the video, the goal is to have IP pandas, right? Like last video, yeah. like la the last frame of the video was great. Just a, smi a smiling happy panda. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, just just so that everyone knows, by the way, those were random location that was for uh, for demo purposes. So those are not yeah, real purposes, location. Yeah. Like we're not gonna tell you where the all the cute pandas are hiding. 
no way. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So let's go through the same, basically the same questions because we walked through this uh, this whole video. This this is great stuff because. Um, those are really impressive stuff that uh, we normally see in professional developers that have been in the industry for many years. And you've been impressing us with the amount of quality you can put into your work. Um, and this is amazing. And we need to know a little bit more about the projects because like, okay, we can track pandas, but can you talk to us about like, what was the goal of the project here? So yeah, um, so basically what the Red Panda Network actually does is they, um, they track the red pandas in the Himalayan mountains to ensure that their habitat is is not being being destroyed or anything like that. So, so their aim is to see where where these red pandas are and to hopefully um, implement some sort of uh, strategy that will help their habitat. So, um, at the start of the year, um, I interviewed uh, the client and. I didn't really understand because he was using a lot of Excel spreadsheets and human labor. I didn't really understand because, because I'm an engineer myself. So like, usually if I see, see a lot of information, um, I don't really, really understand it uh, if there's no story behind it. So yeah. so yeah, the main aim was to ensure that he has a platform that will be able to tell a story about his, his, his organization and create empathy in his, um, any perspective uh, without helping. using Excel as the background of the whole Excel. technology. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So, so that makes sense. And so I'm guessing that um, there was a lot of challenges and I hope Excel was not really one of those challenges. Um, but since, no, uh, but since you're a student, right? You're, so you're coming from an academic background. So you have close to zero experience in the IT industry. Um, and dealing with customers and clients. So what for you were your challenges in, in this project? Um, at the start of the project, my experience using um, using the, uh, the cloud was zero. So uh, it was a very steep learning curve, but um, the, uh, the documentation was great and it helped me learn a lot and, and helped me understand how the different services are linked together um, another challenge I faced along the way was was um, using Azure Maps because I didn't really really understand uh, uh, the documentation at first. But after um, experiencing how to use use the map interface and yeah uh, playing around with it a bit more, I became a bit more confident using it and made that made the application. This is amazing! Like seriously, great work on this. So you managed to Thank solve so all those all those technical problem of getting started. I'm very happy that you're, you, you, you do not face too much problem in those getting started because this is kind of like the, the gateway for everyone that just want to start something. Those part, those paths are so important. Um, but just like everything else, right? So as you go through, uh, through problems, you, you learn a lot, you learn a lot more from your mistakes than from, uh, from your successes. That's one of the motto that I love to use. Um, and, and for you, and what were your learning? What did you learn the most in this project? I think um, the stuff I learned the most was that the stuff you learn at university and the stuff you learn at uh, through doing something, through experiencing something, mm -hmm. is two completely different things. So, like. At university, um, you understand how the software development lifecycle actually works and the different stages, analysis, design, implementation, testing, blah, blah, blah. But then when you actually experience it, you learn so much about uh, little um, intricacies and little little quirks that that um, that you never learned before. So, so if there's any students watching, I implore you, get your <laughs> hands dirty, find a project, get, uh, get stuck in, and, and you'll learn a lot. And the difference between... The first bit Sorry. from practice, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and another thing I learned was that having having a sh like like a really strong team that will always help you um, along the way is extremely important. And and the strong team was Sarah, Lee, Daisuke, and yourself, Max, as well. So so that um, that strong team really helped me throughout the process. And yeah. 
no problem here. Uh, for me, I just call it herding cats. I mean, it's just about making things like roll as they as they should and getting out of your way. So that's always what we're trying to do. So those were great, and those are two amazing projects. And so I know that your project is open source and that it is available. I don't know if we have the link. That's going to be interesting. Uh, but if you all want to know more about those two projects, uh, so how do you get involved? Uh, at those university is you can go through uh, our Microsoft Learn Indicators and students on the links aka.ms slash mslearn uh, edu um, and if you want to know more about this capstone project on which both uh, Farid and Shaq are are a part of uh, you can go to aka.ms slash uclixn and it is an I it's not an L so it's all uppercase and that will basically give you all the summary of what is the what is the capstone project for for UCL. If you're in London, that can help as well. Or you can actually talk to your university about getting a few capstone projects because, uh, as I'm sure, Farid and Shaq uh, really benefited from those. Um, and obviously, if you are involved in the future and it would love to be part of our student ambassador project uh, program, like that is also something very great because if you want to keep your learning up. This is one of the way that you can actually start and just um, contribute to your community and you can learn more and more about technologies. The goal of that program is to take a very uh, inquisitive student and that are interested by, by a technology, just help them uh, achieve more on this one. Um, what else do we got? We got the open source project for for uh, for, for your project uh, that is, we, I think we're going to share in, in the show notes at the end. And for project 15 on which you helped out on, if you all remember, we have also links at the end. So we want to make sure that everything that we do is as open source as possible. Some of those projects, of course, cannot uh, be open source due to some obvious reason, like uh, poaching and stuff like that. Um, but otherwise, uh, I would love to transition that over to, uh, to Pamela after that, that will cover all, uh, about this very interesting project, uh, that's called the elephant edge challenge. Pamela, are you ready? I think you're on mute. That is the, uh, that, that is the motto of this year. Oh, sorry. You're on mute. <laughs> Yep, and even Cameron told us, hey, <laughs> don't yeah. be on mute. Uh, I absolutely loved those projects. It always brought a smile to my face to see the Red Panda project updates, uh, just because how can you have a bad day at work <laughs> seeing right? them? It is uh, amazing. It's absolutely amazing. And one, I just want to do a huge shout out to Farid and, and um, Chuck as well, because not only did they do these amazing projects, they also provided tons of product feedback, which means that our products are going to be easier to use for everyone. And anytime we work on these projects, like we love to hear feedback from all of you working on them. If you ever have issues or anything like that, or want to uh, think of a new feature to make things easier for everyone when building IoT solutions, always reach out to us. Uh, and so we're always happy to, to, to put that into our products and make them better. So thank you so much, Max. My I'm pleasure. Gonna Go ahead and bring in Adam, uh, which I'm really excited about. Uh, he's our special guest speaker. Uh, you probably have seen him before. Uh, so Adam, uh, it's great to have you here. Uh, I'm excited for, for us to talk more about the Elephant Edge Challenge. Excellent. Hi, Pamela. Good to be here. Yes. And those Good who... Everyone else. <laughs> Those who might not know, uh, Adam was actually the co-founder, uh, founder of... Uh, uh, Hackster.io, and then now he's at uh, Edge Impulse as the Chief Experience Officer. So I just wanted to do that that shout out. You're you're uh, you. always always at amazing companies. <laughs> so. Thank you very much. Hey, I used to work for Microsoft for eight years. I know, I know. Our, our paths amazing keep companies. crossing <laughs> with, <laughs> with different projects. Well, uh, we're going to go ahead and jump into to talking about the Elephant Edge Challenge. You know, this was all about bringing. Uh, Hackster uh, coming together with Microsoft and other sponsors to 
make a big call out for the community uh, to build this advanced elephant tracker collar, uh, which is really to help uh, with uh, poaching and trophy hunting and human conflict. And so I know this challenge started back in August and the projects are absolutely amazing. And so Adam, I would love if you would talk a little bit more about how this project was started, um, a little bit more about the challenge itself, and then the impact you saw with the community together. And then we're gonna hand it off to our community member, uh, winners to go ahead and talk about their projects. Excellent, sounds good. So yeah, I'll tell you, the, I'll take you on a little journey how this whole project came to life and came to be. Uh, in January 2020, uh, right before the world changed, I was in the Netherlands at an event and I met an amazing guy named Tim Van Dam. He works at, at a company he started, an organization rather called Smart Parks that build um, trackers, really smart trackers for all sorts of, you know, causes and animals from orangutans to rhinos, as well as elephants. And, you know, I was standing by his booth and kind of harassing him and asking all sorts of questions. And I was really amazed by what he does with his life, what the organization does and how much good they do in the world. And, is the, and Smart Park is only two people. They really are at the mercy of so many donors and technologies that have to help them uh, bring things to life. And um, we just had a chat and we said, we got to do something together. We got to, to, to come together and build mm -hmm some of the most amazing open source, you know, uh, conservation trackers that we can uh, and bring them to market. And uh, we just kind of shook hands and said, let's uh, get started. And that was kind of like the kickoff just by simply meeting somebody completely a stranger, never met him before. Mm -hmm. uh, both of us having this passion and goodwill and access to resources and the journey started right then and there. Um, from that from, from that point, we, you know, I worked at Hackster and Hackster is an incredible community of about 1.6 million developers. And uh, Hackster had a lot of resources as well as partnerships, in, including Microsoft. And we start speaking to a lot of our partners, uh, Microsoft, Nordic Semiconductors, uh, um, Western Digital, and, and a bunch of other companies. And we asked them, would you be part, would you be willing to be part of this project? And the project you know, would try to build this, this very advanced open source you know, uh, tracker that uses machine learning and really advanced telemetry based on uh, on Azure. Um, and it's incredible. A lot of individuals, really good individuals in these companies, uh, including Microsoft, that gave the lion's share of the funding for this project, said, yes, we're in, we're, we, we've signed up. And um, it, took, it was pretty quick, to be honest, to kind of convince everybody, which is, again, just goes to show that there's so many good people working everywhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, we kind of got started. And along the way, we also had the World Wildlife Fund, Earth Ranger by Vulcan, um, Tau Glass, Avnet, of course, who mm -hmm. owns Axter, and, uh, and Irnas, who built the trackers, joining us. All right, so I'll, I'll fast forward. Uh, we, we hired Irnas, uh, which is a company in Slovenia that specializes in building these kind of trackers. And uh, we built a tracker that can live up to eight years on an elephant because taking down an elephant to put a tracker on this animal is dangerous, it's expensive mm -hmm. and very complex. So it required eight years battery life, uh, hundreds of miles in lower WAN connectivity. It will be extremely rugged. And uh, also our vision was to create almost like an app store of machine learning models mm -hmm. that you can continuously upgrade and update the tracker for all sorts of causations and things that you want to track. Um, and they could, they could be anything from um, human conflict monitoring, uh, poaching risk monitoring, elephant communication monitoring, as well as just an ongoing activity monitoring. So it's not always just about the poachers. Uh, it's really also understanding elephants, continuing to build that translation of what do they do, what do they say, how do they live, and where do they go. Um, so so we've, did, we've done all that. And then the best thing that really happened here was uh, tapping the Hackster community uh, to say, hey, we have all this uh, telemetry and all this data and all these data sets. Can you use them to build these models using Edge Impulse as well as using Avnet's IoT Connect for the telemetry dashboards to create the software that will run on the trackers? Mm -hmm. and, and they did, and they came through in a big way. And I know that some of uh, my favorite uh, people on the Hackster platform will be speaking here later. Um, they delivered big, I think about over 300 people joined this mm -hmm. project. Um, over uh, 31 uh, models uh, and dashboards were built and delivered at the end of the, of the project. And this is also not just a theoretical project. 
we actually are shipping this year 10 Finnish trackers uh, that will land in Africa in different uh, parks uh, that are partners with uh, um, Smart Parks. And Smart Parks is committed to open source the hardware and the software completely under the OpenColor.io uh, project. So win, 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 win. <laughs> Excellent yes. Uh, privilege. Yes, and I love that. The, the challenge is amazing. What's also really amazing, the call out you did was it's open source. Uh, so a lot of the uh, winners are and the people who submitted projects, you can go to hackster.io, look at their project, see their example code. Um, and some of creative like full frameworks that they completely open source to and continued on with that full uh, uh, building projects based on this mission. So, oh my gosh, I'm excited. So we're gonna go ahead. I spent the last couple of weeks with the winners and so they are sharing their stories um, and also sharing advice on how to get started in the community and how to get involved and just, just all around how to start these projects. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and cue that video. Excellent. Hi, my name is Sarah, and I work as an IoT and AI developer at Gaia System, and I'm based in Sweden, and also I'm an ambassador at Edge Impulse, which is perhaps a result of the Elephant Edge Hackathon. And I'm happy to show you a bit of my project, and let's actually show uh, a quick demo. What I created for my project was a tiny ML model for camera traps to run image classification and sending interesting events to the cloud. Along with that, I trained another model for activity classification based on accelerometer data, and that was to be run on the elephant tracker and trigger cameras in the close surrounding. So what you see here is the working setup on an open envy camera board that could detect camera trap events and send them to a message queue, and that can be viewed in some user interface like here. Another solution that I have been working on previously was to have a microcontroller taking images and sending them to a Raspberry Pi for real-time object detection and also tracking. For others who also want to con contribute in this area, I would recommend to connect with people and organizations that already does and thereby like filling your feed with inspiration and maybe also opportunities. And my advice to others when it comes to camera traps specifically, I find object detection models to be a better option, uh, but those are more complex in terms of computation and um, not always an option from microcontrollers, but research is progressing all the time. And for example, Edge Impulse that held this hackathon, they released object detection on Raspberry Pi this week, and that would be my next hack. <laughs> Hi, my name is Mitun Das. By profession and passion, I am a software developer. I love to tinker with hardware and explore new technologies. The reason I joined Elephant Edge Contest on Hackstar.io was a little different. Being a pet parent, I know how special animals are and always wanted to do something for them. And when I saw this contest on Hackstar.io, I said, yeah, probably this is my opportunity to do something for them. This is smart elephant collar, which is uh, powered by two microcontrollers, Peri Nano Sense and Heltec Wireless Stick Light. It also has a GPS module for GPS tracking and powered by battery, obviously. Key features of the collar includes GPS tracking, geofencing, and risk zone alerts. For example, we can define a virtual fence uh, in the forest, and park ranger will be alerted whenever any elephant goes out of the fence. Human presence is detected by um, Bluetooth technology. So, um, for example, um, if anyone um, coming close to the elephant with uh, smartphones, um, they will be detected and park ranger will be alerted immediately. Elephant activity um, is also monitored and uh, predicted uh, using Edge Impulse machine learning model um, running on Nano. Based on the accelerometer data, um, I can um, predict um, if the elephant is walking, resting, running, or doing some uh, activity in doing some uh, extreme activities, and park ranger will be alerted uh, immediately. It also has um, some additional features. For example, uh, if call goes offline or battery is going down, uh, 
So here is the architecture. Um, as you can see, the main component is the caller, and then Helium network. I'm not using any cellular connectivity, rather using LoRa one, um, so that we can um deploy um we can reduce the cost. And um, obviously the um, the major component here is the IoT Connect dashboard. Uh, we are visualizing all the data and creating different rules for alerts. Thanks for watching the demonstration. I hope you like it. And yeah, that's it from me. Bye for now. Hi, I am Mani Manan from India. I've been working as a senior embedded developer at Zeta Haku. Apart from work, uh, I used to develop many prototypes based on a tiny ML IoT, uh, which is more focused on solving uh, many of the global problems. That's how I spent my weekends, and uh, you can see my projects in Axter in, uh, in my Twitter handle. So for this project, uh, I have generated, I have developed a two tiny ML models using a simple software. And the novel approach which I have done was like, I have simulated all the elephant movements like uh, walking, running, or even aggressive movements or ideal position. All these I have simulated using my pet, a pug dog. So that is a one unique approach I have done in my project. Uh, let's go into the video uh, demo. Yeah, so you could see that uh, I just connected my mobile phone to that uh, aging pulse software. Then once it's get connected, I just uh, have a pouch and uh, which I have, uh, which I was tied onto the top of my pug dog. Uh, you can see in this video. Once it is done, I just yeah, collected all the accelerometer data when it was walking. Uh, you can see that uh, even aggressive movements like uh, if the elephant was in a must kind of behavior, it, it shows some aggressive movements. And also I have just captured the running movements. Uh, you can see in that video like. Uh, uh, when I was making it run, all the data were captured. In an edge impulse, you can see that uh, the accelerometer readings like uh, x-axis, y-axis, z-axis. So that's how I have done all the capturing and I have trained the models. So it can easily predict whether the uh, device, if that the model, uh, uh, whether the my pet or any wild animals, it's idle or running aggressive. I think everyone uh, who's in a, IoT or uh, any machine learning or uh, any sensor fusions, those people can have more depth knowledge about that. So they can contribute their idea or their findings into the open source communities like a uh, Axtor or a Project 15. So that uh, we all together can conserve the elephants and we can save the planet. See you. Goodbye. Um, hi, uh, we are team Dual Good. Uh, my name is Swapnil Verma and I'm a software engineer uh, at uh, UK Atomic Energy Authority. And here is my teammate, Mawson Jan. Hey everyone, this is Mawson and I'm a research scientist and I work, um, like I deal with uh, speech recognition problems in daily life. Yeah, so the goal of our project was to prepare a two machine learning algorithm. Um, so we prepared one for preventing elephant poaching. Uh, we call it human presence detection. And the other algorithm uh, we prepared was to monitor elephants' activity. Um, so about uh, el preventing elephant poaching, that is human presence detection. Most of talk about that algorithm in a, in a second. Uh, for elephant activity monitoring, so we could not find any open data set containing the elephant's activity. Therefore, I had to prepare a pseudo data set uh, consisting of my activity. So the pseudo data set contained the accelerometer data of my activity, like um, walking, standing, etc. And uh, I used it to, uh, to generate a machine learning algorithm, which will uh, predict what I was doing at the time. Um, I think the same model can be used with an actual data set containing elephant security, if we could find it. So, um, and the training and test accuracy of uh, that machine learning model was almost 100%, which is too good to be true. I reckon it's, it's because of the lack of quantity and quality of the data set. But if you have um, some real data set from uh, of, of uh, ele elephants activity, probably it will be, it will definitely be less than 100%. Yeah, now I'll give uh, control to Mushan. Yeah, so uh, I mean, as, as Swapnil explained, the first part is the human presence detection algorithm. Um, so this algorithm is about detecting the presence of humans around the elephants. 
in the environment of like the natural environment or jungle kind of scenario so what we did was uh, we started with collection of um, voice samples of elephants uh, humans and some voices which are not uh, related to these categories which something you would expect in uh, sounds like bird sounds or some uh, sound of air or some music I don't know uh, so we collected these samples and we prepared our training and testing data set and this part was uh, quite an exciting part because we get to focus uh, usually we get to focus less on collection of data and more to the models but this was a very good part um, next on the uh, pre-process these this data so that um, we uh, distribute them equally so that uh, while training the model uh, the model sees all the data equally and learn uh, well so the, our next part in this algorithm was to prepare um, the model for the training and do some kind of experiment. So what our approach uh, differs on is, um, of course, we had to use the Edge Impulse platform, but uh, what we did different was we experimented with many different kinds of configurations, uh, such as we uh, tweaked the number of, uh, let's say, number of uh, layers, number of neurons, and the different kind of um, uh, layers that are uh, available in edge impulse such as convolution layers pooling layers dropout layers and so on and so forth so and we reported uh, ac test accuracy and the inference timings and the latency of the model uh, in the different scenario in different configurations um yeah so overall uh, this was this uh, this was the algorithm the main challenge we also faced the, the lack of data set like as mentioned many times so if anyone already has a data set of any multi-digit data set or anything, please open source them uh, and working, uh, contributing to the open source community in terms of hardware and software would be a really good idea. And yeah, you can start by that way. And if you're totally new, uh, the best thing would be to uh, following what someone has done. Uh, people who are part of this community, hexto.com and instructable.com, they, they, they 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 have they do, they do a really good job of illustrating uh, these steps one like step by step everything so you can you can follow those steps to prepare something and then add on top of that which is your own contribution and open source that uh, yeah thanks for coming goodbye hey thanks for taking interest in our project cheers.
my project is called uh, Collis and Gateways, and I'm excited to talk a little bit about it. So after studying on the internet, mostly on the internet, about human elephant conflict, particularly in, in, in an Indian context, I came up with a common software framework that can be applied across each of these different scenarios. And they meet all the common requirements that you would need out of such a framework. One of the things that uh, I tried to do with the framework was to distill all the requirements in these different kinds of con uh, conflicts and to basically try and get a, co a common set. And the framework's responsibility is to uh, meet all these common requirements, such as reading data from the caller, doing some diagnostics, sending alerts, monitoring the data, and so on. So th these are the common requirements. So imagine that an elephant is leaving a protected area and it is crossing a railway track to go to the other side of the forest. And you as a park official or a forest ranger uh, want to know what is happening. And uh, you're also a train driver who really doesn't want to crash into this elephant. So this is a simulated path. The elephant is leaving the sanctuary, crossing the railway track and going out to the other side. Here in the simulation, we are using a mosquito broker. In reality, we would be using a LoRa or Bluetooth communication system. We would also be starting the sanctuary border and railway gateway towers to listen to the elephant's caller. Since the uh, callers use uh, LoRa, and they also need to conserve their battery for a long time, uh, communicating with the gateway is the only way they'll be able to push the data. And th that in the gateway, in turn, will communicate with the rest of the world or the cloud. So the gateway play and the gateways play an important role in this sort of infrastructure. So since gateways are essential, we can also turn that to our, to our advantage and add some extra functionality to the gateway. We can we can place these gateways in hotspots of human elephant conflict, and we can we can use that to send alerts. So for example, here, the gateway is detecting that the elephant is leaving the sanctuary edge and it is sending the alert to the dashboard and it's also sending a localized alert. This localized alert can be in many different forms. Now the, gate, the elephant has moved from the sanctuary edge and it has gone to the railway it's close to the railway tower and the railway tower is detecting that and is sending a localized alert and it's also sending a warning the localized alert can for example be a display board a digital display board or some sort of display that warns the train driver that about the presence of elephants in that area so that they can reduce the speed of the train so this is one such uh, application that we can do I would say that hackathons and competitions are a great way because they get you directly involved in solving a problem. Also, if you can reach out to like-minded people, for example, even reach out to me and if you have some ideas or we can work on this or you want to improve this further, we can certainly work on that. Uh, thank you to all the winners who shared all their projects. They're absolutely amazing. We're going to go ahead and uh, share the slide on how all of you guys yep. can, everyone can go ahead and contribute to these projects. They're open source and how you can learn more. A uh, huge thank you to all of the speakers today. Uh, you've Everyone was amazing and telling their stories. Uh, so huge thank you to Avnet and Hackster uh, for helping drive community efforts as well. Uh, this has been amazing for, for us uh, to be working with you as well. Anything you want to say, Max? No, I think we're completely out of time now. Okay. Uh, so I don't know if this is going to make it live, but <laughs> sit in ambassadors, link, always good. Project 15, always good. So. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Bye.